For Kruma Media's policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is one of South African medical students who was studying in Ukraine, Lupum Londengu, to discuss how the Russian invasion of Ukraine impacted their studies. So you were amongst quite a number of South African students uh, who were studying in Ukraine and when Russia invaded the country. Could you tell us what happened and how you managed to get out of harm's way? Well, uh, the war started on the early hours of the 24th of February. Um, I was already awake at that time. Uh, I was watching the emergency sitting of the United Nations Security Council on the then Russian threat uh, to Ukraine. Uh, it was there where I learned uh, that the war had started up or that in fact um, uh, Russia had declared a war on, on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, soon after that, uh, we could not sleep for days. Um, it was just hectic. Uh, everyone panicked and uh, there was just chaos, you know. Uh, there were long queues in the shops, in the grocery shops. There were long queues in the ATMs. Uh, there were no food at all in the in the in the shelves um, of the stores, and um, there was just uh, some degree of uh, chaos and and uneasiness. There were also uh, cruise missile attacks. There were air raid uh, sirens, and the cruise missile attacks would be followed by uh, waves of tremors. Uh, it was all just terrifying uh, to be in Ukraine at that time, if I can say, uh, because we had never experienced anything like that before, and we did not know what to do. You, you left uh, Ukraine after how many days, if I may say? I left uh, three days after the war had started, uh, but that three days felt like the longest three days of my life. It felt like three weeks. Uh, for us. And was there any assistance uh, Lupumlo, from the South African government? Okay, I do not know if it was assistance, if to say it was assistance or such, but um, uh, Ambassador Andre Grunewald uh, managed to organize us uh, before the war started into one WhatsApp group and um, he told us uh, everything we needed to know just in case the war started. Uh, he told us uh, we had to be ready and uh, really he did make sure after the war had started that everyone was evacuated from ukraine uh, to to the neighboring countries so and we are very grateful for that yes that is the assistance we then got so during yeah. the start of the invasion uh, there were reports in other media uh, houses that uh, other foreign students were experiencing racism uh, from border officials as they tried to flee Ukraine. Can you tell us more about what happened? Well, I wouldn't say that um, it was racism as such, and I am not going to dispute uh, that, it wasn't, uh, that it was racism either way. Uh, but I understand that, you know, when we got to the border, um, it was cold, it was very cold, and um, there were long queues, you know, uh, we were all tired uh, and the students were frustrated. Everyone was frustrated. And I understand that um, the, the, in, in Ukraine, they had said that uh, the priority passage must be given uh, to old people and children. And there were no old students there. Uh, there were no students that were old people and there were no students that had children. So to, to, to others that might have been quite frustrating and it might have seemed like a racism. But uh, in my own understanding, I believe that each and everyone was frustrated. We were all scared. We we're just trying to get out of the country. I understand that Ukraine has been a popular place uh, for South Africans to study, particularly uh, medical degrees? I wouldn't necessarily say that uh, because I feel like uh, South African students are all over the world in different places. There are students, I think, in Asia also, uh, and there are students also in the West 
of Europe. And you know um, why I don't want to say it was so much popular because I know that there were 54 students that were repatriated from Ukraine. Uh, and these students are medical students. And if you compare this number to the students from other countries that were repatriated, you would find that it's quite a small uh, figure. Because if you look at India, for instance, they repatriated about 18,000 uh, students. So yes, uh, Ukraine is a popular destination uh, for medical students from all over the world, not just from here in South Africa, because in South Africa, we are still, uh, because uh, in South Africa, we're still such a number of, uh, a small number of students. And your medical studies mm. now uh, have been disrupted and many of you were, who were studying in Ukraine wow. have appealing uh, to our government uh, to allow you to complete your studies uh, in our universities. Are you making progress in this regard? To answer that question, if I may say, um, when the war started, uh, the students managed uh, to organize themselves and elected student representatives and managed to initiate contact uh, with various stakeholders uh, that includes the medical teams of South Africa, that includes the uh, Department of Higher Education and Training. And uh, we got their support subsequently after initiating contact with them. We did get um, their support and we are very much uh, grateful for that. There is progress uh, that is being made but it is not uh, being made at a pace or at a speed that would satisfy or that is required by our needs as students, you know, uh, because uh, time is actually moving and we are actually getting uh, to the end of the academic year in Ukraine. And uh, you would find that, you know, um, the, the new academic year will start in September in Ukraine and students would have to have paid school fees by then and register for online classes. Now I would like the progress to be faster is so that we can avoid uh, uh, registering maybe the students for online classes in Ukraine where they would have to pay fees and then come back and pay fees again here in SA once a decision has been finally made. What yes. exactly are you appealing uh, from our government? We, as students, you know, um, we would like the students, all of the students that were affected by the Ukrainian war, uh, to be integrated back here into South Africa uh, so that we can continue and finish our medical uh, degrees and be able to work here in South Africa. How has it been so far? How are you studying uh, so far, if I may ask? Ukraine managed uh, to, 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 to do some programs for us, some online programs. Uh, we were getting taught online, you know, uh, and that managed to close uh, the gap, you know, because uh, it meant that we are learning something. It meant that we are continuing uh, with learning. But um, online learning is not necessarily ideal uh, mm -hmm. for medical studies, you know. Yeah. Even though, uh, you know, uh, Ukrainian teachers, uh, they were teaching us online uh, from, from various countries outside Ukraine, and they did that all for us, and we're very grateful for that. And if I may ask, is there an option uh, for you as a student to finish off your degrees in Europe, not necessarily in Ukraine? Uh, yes, uh, there is an option uh, like that. It is on the paper. Uh, technically, we can, but we do not feel like it would be feasible uh, for the students, you know, to go and finish off their studies in Europe uh, for various uh, reasons, you know. And uh, one of those reasons being that the fees, uh, first of all, uh, it would be quite the whole process would be very expensive uh, for the students, you know. It would be very difficult to start a new procedure again in another country. Uh, you'd have to apply for visas. You'd have to study a new language. It would be really, really difficult for us at this point. It was difficult uh, going to Ukraine mm -hmm. also. Another thing is that in order to continue in Europe, uh, we'd have to transfer 
And uh, transferring will not be very easy for us. It's not easy to transfer from one medical school to another medical school because of um, the differences in, 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 in their curriculums, right? Mm -hmm. And another thing also is that we do not have uh, official refugee status uh, from Ukraine. So mm -hmm. people that are at a better position to be helped and assisted in Europe are Ukrainian nationals, uh, not uh, foreign students that were studying in Ukraine. How long uh, were you in Ukraine and how far are you to finish your medical degree? In Ukraine, I was there for almost six years now. Uh, this was my final year. Uh, when the war started, I was just left uh, with a few months uh, until I wrote my licensing exam, after which I would qualify as a medical doctor in Ukraine. But I would have to come back here in the SA and apply for the board, sit for the board and uh, register and maybe start my internship. You know, uh, but then that did not happen. The war started and um, we continued online. Uh, the licensing exam was scratched because we could not write the licensing exam online. Instead, uh, they did make us uh, write some sort of an examination and said we would probably graduate this year. But we also, we still feel like this was not necessarily uh, enough for us, you know. Mm. Still feel like uh, we still need some training, some sort to close that gap of online learning that we had for six years. That was Lupum Lundengu in conversation with Polity about how the Russian invasion of Ukraine has impacted their studies.